Hey guys, uh, good evening. Welcome to another episode of Sit Talks. Uh, today I have with me um, Mr. Kochri Shibu, who's the author of uh, Men in Dreams in the Dholadhar and Faith in the Beloved. Uh, we'll be talking to him about his book, uh, about his writing, writing process, and a lot more. Joining in, uh, invite your friends as well. Okay, so I think there is a network issue with the uh, sir. He's joined again. Uh, meanwhile, keep joining in. We will just have Sir here in a minute. Uh, hi guys, uh, we are just facing some technical issues. Sir is joining is join us in a minute. And uh, we will start. Hi guys, uh, we are facing some bit of a technical uh, glitch. Uh, so is just trying to join join in. Uh, stay tuned to this session, and we will just have him here. Hello, Sir. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. Good evening, Sir. Am I audible? Yeah, sure. Yeah, am I audible? audible? Please go ahead. Great. So uh, yes, I'll just take a minute to introduce her. All right. So yeah. I think we have an audio lag of a few seconds. So we will we we'll keep that in mind while while talking. Sure, of course. All right. So um, Mr. Kochiri C. C. Shibu, the best-selling and award-winning author of Men and Dreams in the Zoladhar. Graduated from the prestigious National Defense Academy, Khadakwasla, in 1981. He has served in the Indian Navy and commanded two warships. Post his retirement, he has executed hydroelectric projects in the Kaveri River Basin in Karnataka, Vyas River Basin in Himachal, and the Tista River Basin in Sikkim. He holds a postgraduate degree in Defense Studies from Chennai University and MA in English Literature from Pune University. Sir changed tack from the snow-clad mountains to the blue oceans and has been associated with the setting up of a shipping company in India. Faith and the Beloved is his second book. Many of the characters in the novel are inspired from those whom he has encountered during his extensive travel. So, welcome to the session. Thank you, Sid. So, uh, let me ask you the first question. Uh, what made you change tracks from being a naval officer to executing Heidel projects and then to writing stories? Uh, the writing stories part has always been there with me wherever I was. So it is, goes back a long time to my school days. So when I joined the National Defense Academy and in uniform, your writing is there, but it's very different. You write about strategy, tactics, warfare, weapons, equipment, and it's a different kind of writing which cannot come out for very obvious reasons. Okay. So there are thousands of pages and, you know, uh, thought process which was there when I was in uniform. Now, uh, when I came out, it was a deliberate choice to try something very different because I always believe that it's always to take on the challenge of doing something very different and possibly 
hydroelectric projects is a good place which is in terms of risk quotient quite similar to the defense life where in it, you know day to day itself there is a risk element in that work you have so long as you manage it well it's okay so so it comes naturally to people who have worked in uniform so i enjoyed that quite a bit and there it was an eye opener to see how their normal ordinary workers and their extraordinary life in doing ordinary things so it's something which is never spoken about and that is why i wrote the first book which i thought their story should be told how they live what their aspirations are and you know the kind of thing which you never get to read otherwise even i've never read one before where one does talk about the lives of you know the ordinary mortals in a hydroelectric project then uh, the second part was that uh, so that was a by choice that i decided that i will take up okay. something different so i kind of uh, you know one after the other so i did projects and you know till when i went to sikkim we did a, completed a 100 megawatt project so then there is an somebody called me i said okay so got back to shipping again which is anyway it's like back of your palm so the writing has always been there with me all through so i wrote i could take up fiction writing only after i left the service not possible for a career soldier to dabble in anything other than what you do because it's it's an engrossing job and you have to be committed okay so the uh so what is your writing process like how do you begin and how how is the entire process of writing it so i believe in something called character sketching so that's an ongoing process that i do so where in you uh, based on your observation based on reading based on events that is happening around you anything of interest you sketch a character and keep an anvil of characters with you so that is what i did for my first book and that's what i did for my second book also so my start point is always character sketching so okay. i had an anvil of almost 200 characters when i started writing the second book in many ways it's similar to collecting ingredients for preparing for a feast wherein you not decided your menu but you know you have a general idea so you need good quality this good quality that so in that sense so thereafter okay. then i from that select uh, one protagonist and then you know is the six or seven or four or five the characters whom you have in mind and start the plot with one and then bring in the characters and it evolves as a right so while okay. i have a uh, kind of plot in my mind it, it it really it's only when the characters are uh, kind of brought in in the first few chapters that things crystallize and then of course it falls into place so uh, okay. so in 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 many ways it's quite a time consuming process and iterative mm-hmm. the writing is iterative right. till the concept right. crystallizes right so in faith and the beloved which was <laughs> which was the character that actually came first see in faith and the beloved if you see the blueprint of the whole book is there in the first chapter right so to a discerning reader as you move forward you let to keep coming back to the first chapter because there are clues given in every chapter in the first few chapters it's actually introduction of characters so to some of the readers who just skim through fast you may not if they miss the link mm-hmm. yeah i think we lost you for a second there uh you're not audible uh, you're not audible not audible
Hi, Shilpa. Thank you for joining. We are facing some serious technical issues today. Not audible. Maybe you can rejoin, uh, exit, and join again. Yeah, yeah, you can exit and join again. So uh, we'll, I'll just add him back and uh, we'll continue with the conversation. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're audible now. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Some call came in between, so this got cut. Yeah, yeah, no issues, no issues. Okay, yeah, so yeah. Uh, we were talking about the characters in Faith and the Beloved, and you were telling us how the first few chapters hold the key to the book. First chapter has got a blueprint to a discerning reader, and I'm, you know, you closer there in the next three, four, five chapters, the kind of puzzle solving to the reader. the flow of the book right so uh, you know changing your storyline from the first book which was men and dreams and the dholada to faith in the beloved how difficult was that one is set in a completely different way another is set in a completely different way Sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear yeah, you. Now. Okay, so uh, you know, uh, the first book was actually what I wrote was what I would call, you know, it was uh, written in a book of prize style, traditional classic style okay. of writing, with a uh, technical mm -hmm. fiction and a thriller. All three of them in kind of more, more or less similar proportions in one book, and it's, it is many ways I meant it to be different. It was different. This time around, of course, this was definitely an aim to write a crime thriller, again with a difference. Because in many parts, you will find that this book is also almost documentary or narrative when it comes to background okay. or life in an AIT, life in an IIM, or an ad agency, what LTT does. A lot of the places, it's you know kind of uh, maybe almost documentary, where there's a lot of information being provided. Some of the readers may not like it because it kind of slows down the pace of the book. So again, right. it's in real life, even thriller, even thriller when it happens in real life doesn't happen at that super phase that you read in books. So I have right. tried to give it a realistic touch. That's how it has gone. It was by choice. It was, there was no difficulty in it. As okay. a matter of fact, um, the kind of background that I have, time, space, events, and you know, thrillers come naturally. That is mm -hmm. what we used to do, what we call war gaming. Right. Always all this only I've done enough of it. So that part was never that transition was not difficult at all. Right. And again, the Faith in the Beloved is more like a family chronicle going through because we see generations of people. So, uh, you know, so did you create a fa entire family chart and then, you know, then you decided to plot the story or how did it go? So I told you actually, when you initial part of the writing, what you do is you have a kind of small marker board, white marker board. So wherein you put down various people. So there is people, time, events, and geography. And, and okay. this is a non-linear book. So the time from chapter one, right. maybe 21st century, chapter two, maybe 20th century, chapter three, maybe even 19th century. So uh, it's a non-linear writing. So you yourself, you need to keep track. 
So initially, when you right. write, you have a kind of a white board where it says character A this time, character B this time, and when the lifelines cross, there is a lot of uh, a matching of time, space, events, and geography which needs to be done, and all the characters, and not just one, a number of events which are linked together, and when the clues fall into place, etc. So initially, it's almost right. like a research work where you have a, a mm. notebook and a you know marker board. Where you keep putting this, so you have at a glance you remember where people are in what timeline. Though after about five six chapters, you in your in your mind, then it all comes to you. It falls into place. You see all the characters and the timelines clearly in your mind. So till then, yes, you have to keep track. And even the editor will ask you. Editor also right. requires this information. He'll say, okay, this character at this time. So where is that character? So the timeline is kept for the editor also because the editor when it goes right. through. She will also take it, you know, kind of find so many faults with you. And one of the first thing they also check is time, space, people, even geography. So you know you are clear about that. But yes, it takes a lot of detailing and uh, meticulous working to get it right. Right. So how many drafts did it actually take you to finalize Pete and the Pillar? How many drafts were you working on? I lost count. I would say because. uh the one of the problems in that is in the sense that initially when you start you start with one character and you go right. okay let's say you by the time you reach a second character you rewrite the first one by the time you reach a third okay. character again you rewrite first and second so almost they you know by the time you reach about i think there are eight kind of main and sub supporting characters right so eight times first initially the whole thing was in you know, almost eight times it went wrong then after that as the story moves towards end again you end up revisiting so i lost track as to how many times but at the end whatever is your you know i mean you have a version you save it in word in version 1 version 2 version 3 i think it was right. version 29 which i sent to the editor i didn't tell her so but i saved it because you know which version is in then after of course right. it goes to the background then you work with what editor sends you uh, but that's right. okay i mean today with the computers that's not so much of an effort that's not a problem you yeah. can you can track back so long as you saved each change in the track change right so uh, what inspired you to write uh, faith and the beloved actually one of the uh, key point events is actually an event which happened sometime in the 80s so the ltt when it uh, broke out the you know the civil war started in sri lanka there was an event in 1983 perical where there was a mob set fire to a tamil family in a car in colombo because of some fight in the northern part of the country right and the parents were burned alive and they pulled the children out so the father up to some time from the burning car he comes out pulls his children out and takes them back into the car so that they die with him now this was debated uh, quite a bit in the media at that point in time there was no electronic media it's all print media and it did catch a you know it did kind of strike a chord with me that you know to the plight of the father who has to kill his own children or he believes that it is better for those children to die with his parents than be left to the mercy of the mob you know it's a very very tough choice and difficult thing so one of the characters is actually inspired from that particular story and that's where actually if you see the whole ltt action starts off when the guy says you need to fight another day and his whole life is evolved around his commitment to his parents who were killed he believes that you know he's doing it the cause for them even after the cause is over he still continues to do what he thinks is his duty to that cause or because his parents gave up his life so he says he has to do right. how is stupid the thing that he is doing so that definitely right. yes i remember that one. thing so that is a that is that like part of the book yeah so that's one part then of course your see Terror attack of Mumbai, 2611. So many innocents who got caught in the crossfire, who had nothing to do with any any of this, but who were just killed. Right. And the families which go asunder, what happens suddenly if the you know one uh, you know father, mother, or somebody is killed? What happens to the family? And third, right. demonetization. So one of the efforts was also to sensitize people to the events that happened, historical events, and how it affects you. It may not affect all of you. like corona it's okay statistics still such time it's yeah. uh, affecting others when someone dear to you goes it is almost statistics it's pain it becomes real it, it becomes real so one of the effort was also to sensitize the generation to 
there was something called ltt the fear sister organization in the history of the world they were the ones who pioneered suicide terrorism they convinced thousands of people to give up their life life and told them that you know it's better to die with honor than live under subjugation something which nobody else has done till date and even there you know fidayin which came later on and also diluted version of this nobody has been able to motivate a set of people to give up you know we lost our own ex prime minister can you imagine the level of motivation to the people that anybody and everybody so and it also brings in some questions see you know the legal system that we have he based on a first fundamental premise that all of us value our life and that that what is the biggest punishment that a legal system can give you is to take your life and if you decide that you know your start point is your life itself you are giving it up then where does the judicial system go the social norms the judicial system everything goes for a toss it's difficult when people cross the line so it's also to sensitize our readers to what happens when you push a society unnecessarily to a corner what like what happened in sri lanka such fierce things came about it was not required but it happened right so same thing with 2611 where someone comes and says you know i don't know some people came and just kill innocents in the name of a mm-hmm. cause i cannot it's difficult for people to fathom why would somebody just go around killing innocents so right. many of the time many of the efforts was to sensitize our readers to events in the recent history and you know how even today if we do not take care then we could be vulnerable to such Uh, you know activities in future so there is you know including the new generation which is playing role playing games and games on computers even there people have penetrated there are as many groups and thugs there as there in your normal walk of life it just said you know they are more deceitful than other games hey uh, another thing that stands out about the book is its cover in the revised edition the cover is something that has been appreciated and you know commented about a lot so what was your brief that went behind uh, designing this uh, new cover for the i think that credit goes to the cover designer whom i have given credit in the book her name is misha obroy i i requested her to read the book and design a cover from what she understood so she read the book and she thought this is you know she has come out of it it's a heart there's a diamond and there's a blood so kind of right. after you read the book you know how it correlates so i must right. say that uh, that you know it was not a brief from my side i asked a designer to read the book and uh, suggest a cover design so we should did so it did come out well and i believe that it always works like that yeah in fact you know uh, because in the previous edition the cover was something that that did not uh, attract people to that much but in this in the paperback especially when the paperback comes you know when you touch and feel the cover it it has a very premium feel to it the entire you know the the blood red color on the background and the diamond shining so that has a very different uh, feel to it sure of course of course I give full credit to the cover designer that's for it definitely so if you had to pick a usp for the book and you had to describe the book in one line uh, how would you do it a value system all right because if i were to amplify it the modern means is uh, if you see behavior of an individual is a reflection of his or her value system and value right. system to any society comes to the children from family school society religion and depending on right. what background where he is that influence may vary and this is the formative years till about 12 or 13 years in this book if you see that it's all about people what they value in life and uh, what to what extent they are going to stand by what value system they have right or wrong that is what the readers right. will decide it's like looking at okay. mahabharat everyone has a perspective on what is Correct. right and what is wrong so here also it is like this so it's a value system and what how much people value your dear ones or what you stand for and how much are you willing to go to stand by what you believe so it's it's all about value right. system that is what the whole book is about so when you are not writing what are the other hobbies that you like to pursue oh there is uh, mostly i have stopped reading fiction since i started writing in 2009 so 
I'm out of reading fiction for us maybe almost 12 years, but I do read a lot, and mostly in research for either one book or the second book or you know sketching characters. That is an ongoing process that doesn't stop, and you know your your plots keep churning in your mind when you have to decide. This, I mean, India is a country with billion population, and there is no dearth of plots and uh, right. stories. There are enough stories. So. And then sometimes when you want to churn, you know, you pick up some events which have happened, which have really kind of uh, shaken up the society, and to think, and a different, uh, you know, you know, kind of perception of events. So there's a major part. Otherwise, you know, uh, I'm still working. When I told you, I'm busy still working for a you know, right. consulting for a shipping company that is there, plus quite a right. bit into yoga. That's the thing basically. so uh, you know you have traveled the country and you know you have seen a lot of uh, lot of the country and you know traveling and all that what made you decide to settle down in bangalore oh that goes back a long time that is that is a the chapter which was decided in way back in 2005 so when i came decided okay bangalore generally the it's a popular place it is that uh, you know what do you call that it capital of the world that's right. what i believe in people may not agree but okay definitely it capital of india it's a good place to be in it's only one of the few metropolitan cities in the world which is about 1000 meters elevation and for about 10 months a year you don't require you know it's, it's a celebrious climate for 10 months a year right so okay couple of months right. it used to be called once upon a time non fan station but of course with the population right. coming in that non fan part has gone about because of uh, dense population but otherwise it's a good place to settle right. down and south the possibly it's the most popular uh, destination and it's a very cosmo kind of uh, uh, cross section because of the it sector because there are about right. 15 like 15 like it engineers and they come from all over the country it is purely merit so you'll find it's a right. it's a good place to be So, what would be your advice to budding writers who who are watching this session? First, I'll say that you know, observe and write. So that is the first part. That you should have the power of observation and power of writing. And the second part is that you know, please do not mix up flowery English with storytelling. Command of the language is good, and writing a you know flowery sentence is also good. but storytelling is completely different from uh, from flowery language the two are not to be mixed up to give an uh, example it's like telling you know uh, it's like what a mali does and what a landscaping gardener does so landscaping okay. storytelling is like landscaping it is not about writing one you know uh, nursing one plant so storytelling is so one of the things is to be able to observe and write and then keep writing keep telling the story the way you want So everyone's storytelling has to be his or her style. It cannot be copy of somebody else who existed in the past or somebody who is current. So then, then right. it, after some time, like all of us sing, everyone doesn't become a famous singer. All of us act. Everyone cannot be a famous actor. So you, the question is, you be dedicated. Try observe and write, and then writing in English, of course, requires a fair amount of command of the language. and a fair amount of writing a large amount of writing before you right. really get that flow of uh, writing a you know writing enough to get a storytelling uh, kind of platform so that's it right. so how is your publishing experience like because uh, talking to authors i've realized each of the author has had a completely different experience publishing their book so how is your publishing experience different from both of the first book was published by niyogi books so that was you know maybe i so you know that initially you write your you prepare your manuscript and send to many of the people so they responded so they'll publish so okay so then it went ahead but when it came to the second book this time around because of the your the pandemic the print publishing was almost dead last year right so that that is a challenge but otherwise i agree that you know one of the problems with uh, the print publishing which is required to get into any of the, any of the reputed publishers is that most of them do not have time to read books it's not possible because they get books by the hundreds 
every day so uh, that's how in many ways it's a personal challenge how people approach it there is no ready made solution but there are uh, you know there are now the literary agents have become quite active uh, the english uh, reading market in india used to be quite small but after the bloom of the it industry from the 21st century that has substantially increased so there is a kind of what right. you call an indian audience for an indian author mm. so right now the majority of the the writing is mostly in that, you know what you call that love triangle writing or mythology rehash writing where most of the authors right. where you find it easy to work so this kind of crime thrillers and others which takes a lot of time and effort and research there not many who do and then to come up right. with quality writing is not easy so getting it right. published is you know getting coming out of the quality work and then reaching out to publishers that's i i guess it's a individual individual's approach right. and uh, that's all i mean there is no there is no ready made so, solution right so what are you working on next so two books done what is the next that we can expect from you of course uh, by next year i hope to come up with another book but i have not decided the uh, maybe one more genre i will do it will okay. definitely have a prism of history in it and you know okay. the, uh, some i believe that the people should benefit from reading this book even if it's a crime thriller they should feel that you know in this book also there's a lot about uh, background of sri nikrishan family life in kerala which okay. people don't have even heard of that about right. the community and that like kind of life that they have so we are such a big country so you know it's, you know, it's a, the 7 million people or you know what do you call it 8 million people is not a big count so, and they like right. but that is one of the exposure that to bring about or for that matter let's say the uh, uh, information about a perspective on demonetization different from what is in the market what is in the popular media or a take on the right. 2611 or a take on the ltt on so many events so similar i have not decided what that story is going to be number of them churning in my mind but something different that i assure you okay so is the last question uh, how has your life been during the lockdown this year and the last year how has it changed from pre pandemic Uh, one of the things is I was able to complete the second book courtesy of the first lockdown. I got enough time right. to actually take out to you know complete the work because I done a lot of research and kept things, but I really didn't have time to kind of stitch it together. So this right. that was definitely one help. And uh, the second, of course, that you know for people who read and people who do not, you know, it's like what I say: if you are happy in your own company, pandemic is a good time. no if you're alone right. if you're not happy in your company then it's a very bad situation to be in. if you don't like yourself what do you do right. so i Correct. i i also when i hear a lot of people complaining i can never figure it out because if you cannot be happy with yourself how can you live in this world right so, so i always say that you know take this as an opportunity to do add skill sets add value to your life right. do something you know right. it's, it's not too tough so there are many who are doing that and there are many who are just whiling away the time which is terrible but i believe it has been a kind of refreshing and an awakening experience you suddenly realize you know that uh, the, you know how fragile a human life is it doesn't take much right. to turn your life as and so i guess it's been a kind of uh, what is it word uh, definitely uh, you know kind of uh, a reawakening You suddenly, you suddenly right. find you know, you seem to have mm-hmm. reinvented yourself. And right. Many times I don't know. I said you know enough time is something something which I have been minded. So I don't know about others. So I guess it's been okay. Right. But so one of, questions, yeah. one of the questions. Yes. One of the questions that one of my friends sent in, sent in uh, for this live was that your uh, training in the army. How has that helped you uh, write uh, stories? no they do not train you to write stories definitely not but, <laughs> but uh, see it is finally it's about handling people managing time events and places so one of the things that they do there is something called war gaming 
where you can right. create scenarios and the difference is what a team of 30 people do together as an author you have to do it all by yourself as here you have to create you know your it's like uh, it's like playing a football match but you have to be 11 players on one side and 11 players on the other side you have to create those 11 players right. and decide what moves they'll make how they'll play and what the result should be so the mental reach required right. is far far higher as an author is concerned because your whole thing has to come from you nobody else can hold it an editor right. can edit what you have done but he or she cannot write for you so okay. as to that extent yes the training helps especially when it comes to uh, let's say uh, time space management that is something which is a what do you call you know the operational logistics operational requirement the any operational parameters it's very easily to come, comes to that but otherwise yes it's finally it's, uh, you have to what actually helps you is now more than anything else is your the first qualification for a writer is you should be a good reader you have to be a very good reader and you must have a vast spectrum in your mind and you have to keep track of events as they happen then only you will be able to write and even with even if you given a google at least you should know what to search for google Correct. can prompt you that at least what word to type in you should know <laughs> right so i guess i think that is very important so unless you are widely read i mean many people mistake you know uh, so i keep telling this see in our education system you know the adhyapak guru ji or acharya these are all levels in our traditional indian system there are five levels so the first right. one was dissemination of information which was an adhyapak job which has been not taken over by technology if you have access to technology information is available I was just trying to figure it out, uh, so I will join us again. Uh, meanwhile, if you have any questions, you can uh, put them here. So, uh, if you have any questions, uh, just. Uh, put it in the chat and we'll take it up i'll just try and add him back i think there's a network issue on his end
I we just have a net, network issue. <coughs> so I will be joining us back in a minute. Okay, let's see. Sorry, sorry, Hi. sorry, sorry. And no issues. Uh, yeah. And lots of connections. Yes. So you were telling us about the five levels of HP. Yeah. So <clears throat> I'm just telling so. in that also like you know uh, finally uh, najar is somebody who can tell you the skill the knowledge together and the guru is it will take you to the so in uh, the today's system of uh, you know let's say education so the first part is readily available to the students today those who have access to technology uh, then the information part is relatively easy the only thing is challenge always is training the mind and you know education is the longest process in your life if you take a regular uh, graduate it takes about 18 years 12 plus 4 plus 2 only I mean, like 18 years of your life so we lost the audio again No, we are not audible. I just add him again. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you for that wonderful comment. Uh, apologies for the technical uh, glitches. Uh, I am having green on my end. I think the similar issue is there on his end. So I just add him back. Yeah, he's here. <coughs> Yeah. Okay. I yeah. just wanted. Yeah. Okay. Let me thank everybody. I mean, I've been having uh, too much of problems with my net today. Yeah. So uh, that that's the feature of Instagram Live. The the day you decide to go live, your internet won't work. That's something that we have uh, decided to live with. Guys, for that, uh, just, just thank you, Sabdi, for joining in and staying. Well. Hi guys, thank you for joining me. So I think there is some serious technical issues from his end. So he isn't able to uh, join uh, join back into the session. So uh, thank you for joining. uh this will be up on the igtv so you can watch uh, the video thank you for joining in thank you for uh, for being here
Uh, apologies for the technical glitches, and uh, I hope to be back with another episode of TikTok's release.